Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Marina Smaginakis, a single woman who has been listening to Divine Truth teachings for over five years, received feedback from Mary on the Divine Truth Forum. Mary and Jesus give some unexpected feedback about her addictions and her sense of entitlement towards others. Recorded on the 30th of September 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone, we're here filming another personal feedback session. I'm with Jesus mm -hmm. and today we're going to respond to an email that we, or oh, actually it was a, a forum interaction that I had with uh, a lady called Marina that we know who lives in the USA. And I've had numerous interactions with Marina, both of us have met Marina in person a number of times and so we know her quite well. Mm. And I've had previous interactions with her via email, via my blog, and now we had and one. And face to face. And face to face. Hmm. And we had one here on the forum just recently. And I'm not going to go through reading out all of the exchange that we had. If you are interested to see all of the exchange that that Marina and I had, there will be a Divine Truth Feedback Session document that you can view on our website. Associated with this presentation. Associated with this presentation. Mm. So we link to this presentation and you'll be able to see everything that went on. Not, not everything, only one thing. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this most recent interaction. This most recent thing. Everything that went on this most recent interaction. Yeah. Um, but, but Jesus and I today are just going to respond to the very last uh, message from Marina in the, our chain of interactions because there's a lot of principles about love that we can address with Marina and with other people who have similar issues to Marina mm. um, just by reading her short paragraph that she wrote back to me. So yes. I'll read that out now and then we can get into discussing it. Yes. So Marina says back to me, Hi Mary, I wanted to say thank you for your feedback. I've been fluctuating with feelings of denial, numbness, anger, embarrassment and guilt in alternating orders since reading what you wrote. I th <laughs> I'm sorry Marina, but honestly, <laughs> if what Mary said to you, which was very, very gentle, causes you to have anger, embarrassment and guilt and other feelings in, in alternating orders, <laughs> I suggest that you, like, honestly, you have not much of a strong desire for truth. And in fact, you want to hold on to your facade. And in fact, you haven't listened to previous feedback that has been given to you from both of us, which basically said almost the All exactly the same. The same. Things. So I'm, I was very surprised that you were shocked by what I had to say because it wasn't new information. No. Um, and also, I sort of felt like, oh my goodness, if this level of amount of truth about one specific issue in your life is enough to cause you to have a meltdown. I mean, this is tantamount to a passing comment that Jesus made to me over dinner in 2009. <laughs> and then he moved on with some other, like, if you want God, if you want a relationship with God, you're going to have to want to see the errors within you. Mm. And you can't have a major meltdown Every, Every time, time somebody time presents someone, you with a tiny smidgen of truth. Of truth. In, and the truth being told to you with all of the causes of it. When we say explained. you can't have a major meltdown, perhaps if we can explain. I did have this major meltdowns This is not, this is not yeah. a emotional connection with what we've said to her. That's right. She's melting down about her resistance to what's being said to her. She, she is upset about what's being said to her, yeah. not listening to what's being yeah. said to her, and actually it touching her heart. It's not touching her heart. That's the problem. It hasn't yeah. touched her heart. We've said the same thing to her now for many years. I think you know you have a, I think you have a, a statement in here from 2013, 2013 where I wrote exactly where the same you wrote issue. exactly the same thing. Yeah. And and she didn't let it touch her heart then either. No. And 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 yet she's having what I would call a tantrum. Yeah. Right, which is not an emotional meltdown. It's an emotional resistance to what's been presented. Correct. She's just having a tantrum. And, and honestly, Marina, you have tantrums because you actually are like a child who gets everything and then has one thing taken away. Yeah, and then feels like it's the end of the world. Yeah, because yeah. that one thing was taken away from you. Yeah. 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 And 
I mean, while I understand that the facade, as we deconstruct it, it does, it can, you can feel anger, embarrassment, denial, and numbness, but this is, you haven't yet even engaged with that process. No. With the, engaging with feeling the resistance of the facade. This is probably and if she had the it, fifth she certainly wouldn't be saying time. to you, I yeah. thank you for your feedback. Because yeah. the feeling I feel is from her thanks. is completely the opposite. Yeah. She does not feel any thanks for your feedback. Yeah. She only feels thanks for the fact that you engaged her yeah. and it met one of her addictions to get some response. Yeah. She's not actually thankful for the feedback itself because she actually internally, as she has always done in the past, rejected it. Yes. She rejects the feedback. She doesn't agree with it yeah. internally and she can't even admit that to herself or to us. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that's right. Yeah. She says, I think the hardest part to accept is the how much I am hurting my environment and my brothers this way. It was really, really hard to just sit there and read everything and be like, seriously, am I really that bad? Mm. Yeah, Marina, it's really that bad. You are hurting people a lot in your life and you have no conception that you are. And this particular man that you're interested in, that you call your soulmate, you're, you're, you're damaging him so much and your own condition is degrading as a result of your choice to damage him. Mm. So mm. yeah, it is really quite bad. And it's interesting that you don't think it is because that's what we feel from you, that you don't think bad behaviour is bad. You, you think what you're doing is actually okay. You use divine truth as a justification. So the divine truth about soulmates, you use as a justification to stalk a man. Mm. Like and that, feel entitled and feel to entitled his attention. To his and attention, and approval, yeah. acceptance. And when he doesn't give you what you want, you're upset and angry with him and, and bitter and twisted about the situation. And honestly, all you're doing is using what I would call truth as an excuse to be unloving. Mm -hmm. And it's not even truth. You don't even know if this man's your soulmate. You've got no idea because your condition is such that you can have no idea. You don't know yourself enough to know whether this man's your soulmate or not. Yeah. And yet you're willing to stalk him and pressure him and push him around and control him and manipulate him. And every single thing you're doing with him is unloving. There's not a single loving thing you're doing with him. Mm. And then you say, oh, isn't it terrible how he treats you? Yeah. And that's a very self-absorbed, like narcissistic way to see your relationship with this man. Yeah. 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 In recent years, I've become increasingly more miserable in the relationship area. That does not surprise me. No, because you have avoided all of our previous feedback to you about why you would become miserable. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And I would like to become a better human being and to feel that I could be a better half soul, to love Nick, my soulmate, to have more loving sleep state experiences and to have a more joyful life in general. Mm. Uh, I can't agree. Marina's primary focus is getting her addictions met. That's her primary focus in life. Yeah. And while you get your addictions met, the subsequent result is always going to be a degradation of your life. Yeah. Your life will get worse. Yeah. So it's just like any guy, like any person who drinks too much, they get more and more drink, more and more drink, more addiction met. What happens to their life? Their life degrades. It's the same with your emotional addictions. The more you get your emotional addictions met, the more your life degrades, the more unhappy it becomes. That's the result of the feeding of these addictions, emotional addictions that you have. That's the only reason why your life is degrading, becoming more miserable, because you're feeding your addictions expecting to become happy. And you can't become happy feeding your addictions. No. God has made it that way, purposefully. <laughs> yeah. God's, God's created the universe so that if you feed your addictions, you will get unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, that's what will happen. Yeah. You become so it's unhappy that you can't bear actually. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the addiction is. Yeah. 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 I know that you and Jesus love me and want the best for me. I appreciate that. I had forgotten that even in acknowledgement of some of the addictions, the law of attraction uncomfortably ramps up. Yeah, again, a misunderstanding of divine truth. Yeah. The law of attraction does not ramp up, ever. It just does not. It is what it is. It's reflecting perfectly the soul condition. 
you're just noticing it more. That's all that's happening mm. here. Mm. The law of attraction is already happening to the complete ramped up point that it's going to have to be. And well, the more you choose to deny things, yeah. the more you're putting in your soul. And so the law of attraction responds to the more negative condition. Yeah. So it appears like it's ramping up, but the reality is it's the same response to the unloving condition. Yeah. So if your loving con unloving condition increases, which is what will happen when you feed your addictions, mm -hmm. so will the law of attraction increase to, in, in, to encourage you to see the unloving condition. Yeah. It's not ramping up. Your soul condition is ramping up negatively. Yeah. In other words, it's degrading, not ramping up. It's ramping down. <laughs> and as a result, the law of attraction is responding more strongly because of the soul condition triggering more events. Yeah. That's all that's happening here. Well, and even I'm sorry, I can't even agree with Marina's um, statement. She says, I had forgotten that even in acknowledgement of some of the addictions. First, Marina, you have, you have not, not acknowledged, acknowledged the addictions. addictions. No. Then she says, the law of attraction uncomfortably ramps up. Now, I do not see how a sincere person... Would see would, the law of attraction as uncomfortable. Would see it as uncomfortable. <laughs> nor would I see that a person taking the time, as I did, to carefully explain in response to a question that she asked, yes. um, clearly how she could make some changes... Yes. in her soul condition and improve her condition of love yes. how that would be an uncomfortable ramping up of any no, of anything and yeah the fact that she believes it's uncomfortable is an indication of how much rejection of truth there is already in her yes she yeah. she doesn't want the truth the law of attraction is a beautiful law loving law created by god as god's messenger of truth to you so if, if such a thing could occur that it could ramp up, then surely it's just a ramping up of love, yes. not a ramping up of dis and if it's And if you're uncomfortable, surely it's because you're out of harmony with love yeah. and that's what's causing the discomfort. The discomfort. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. A, yeah, there's some very poor misunderstanding here because it's only an intellectual understanding yeah. of some divine truth. That's right. And also, isn't this, uh, isn't Marina the lady who basically, the girl who basically um, cons consistently believes that, that she's in a much better condition than this other guy who she's interested in? Yes. Yeah. And there's some of the Nothing issues. could be further from yeah. the truth. And we have told you that before, Marina. Yeah. We've told you that your condition is actually worse than his because he doesn't have demands on you that you have of him. Yeah. So, so your condition is actually worse than his condition and you're thinking that your condition is better. And in fact, aren't you also the person who believes that your condition was better than Mary's? And I'm going, wow. No, when I met Mary, her condition even then was better than your condition is now. So, so you need to have, have a better grasp of what your own true condition is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this to destroy you. I'm saying this so that you can at least intellectually see what is going on for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, you have very, very large demands upon your environment. Your father in particular created within you this idea and concept that you are a princess in the world and that you should be able to get everything you want at any time that you want it. And you are perfectly happy to continue to believe this because you have a relatively good life that you don't have to do too much to maintain. And yet you are not seeing that your, your degrading happiness you're continually going down into happiness is a direct result of you just getting every addiction you have met. Yeah. And that is going to cause your soul condition to degrade. It's going to cause the attraction events to increase. And it's also going to cause yeah, the sadness that you have inside of your soul eventually, at, which is the law of compensation operating upon your soul in order to correct you that, uh, and to correct your belief that everything is fine inside of you mm. and it's everybody else in the world that's got problems. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Sorry, I, Marina, but that's, that's, that's the, the truth, truth as I see it. Um, perhaps on that point, I could read just a couple of sentences that I wrote to Marina which apply to many people sure and that is the resistance to seeing how many demands one places on their environment and how truly sinful this is 
is an issue for a number of people who are listening to Divine Truth at yes. the moment. Particularly a number of women in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Living like this and refusing to see the sin in it, actually viewing the state as righteous, seriously degrades an individual's soul condition. And that's really what you have just been explaining to Marina. Yes. And She's degrading her soul condition by having increasing demands upon her environment, using divine truth as the justification for her increasing demands, yep. when actually a person who loves has no demands, yep. or very few demands, yep. upon anything, yep. and, and definitely not upon their environment. You know, and they have very few demands except maybe what you'd classify as demands of themselves to be loving. Yes. Which Marina has very few She's Very of, few actually. Advice. She has very little demand of herself to be loving. She demands everyone around her be what she believes is love, yeah. but which is actually only meeting her, her addictions. addictions. Yeah. And so, you know, every barter situation she enters is actually unloving. Yeah. And it's quite damaging what she's doing to her soul and to people around her, which is, is the reason why she's becoming more unhappy. By her own admission. By yeah. her own admission. Yeah. yeah. There were about five issues just in that little email mm. that I thought um, would be good just to discuss as principles, because yes. again, they're things that I see a number of people struggling with. They feel unhappy, they feel like they're not progressing, and they kind of feel dissatisfied and are blaming outwardly upon others in, or their environment. They're or angry that they're not getting what they want what out they of want. life and they want yeah. other people to meet their addictions. Yes. And whenever somebody doesn't meet their addictions, they get angry. Yeah. And I see there's about five issues yep. where these people, when they're interacting with divine truth, why that issue just compounds for them. Yes. So the first one that Marina displays and... Um, many other is the desire to maintain a facade yes they don't and she, marina wants to believe that her condition is fine yep. and and if she has a problem with anybody it's because of their condition yeah yep and these people typically find it very difficult when public feedback is given to them of course because they want to maintain the facade to themselves and to everyone else that everyone else is the issue yes the, and the cause for their unhappiness yes so in this by the way in this feedback marina we're not trying to make you feel bad about yourself we're not trying to also publicly out you or anything no we're trying to give you feedback that we feel many people have the same problem that you have yes and that is they're trying to maintain their facade and they live in their facade so much that they wholeheartedly believe their own facade. Yeah. And this is what the problem is for you. You wholeheartedly believe that everything's fine with you and that everybody else around you should do what you want. And, and, and there is the beginning of your unloving behavior. Exactly. Yeah. And as you said, there's a, in that state, there's a rejection of truth yeah. constantly. Yeah. But the other issue why people who are in this state really struggle um, is that in with private feedback, they're so attached to their facade, they often dismiss the private feedback quite readily that might come from us or others. Well, what I find with a person like Marina, and, and again, Marina, you, you need to just allow yourself to have this flow over you rather than getting too upset about it. You know that we love you and care about you, and we do, we do would like to see you progress. Yes. That's why we've spent the time so with you in the past that we have. So much time giving you feedback. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and we feel that her pure nature is going to be lovely. Yes, like, But definitely. there's just a lot of injuries that she needs to work through first. But one of these large injuries is this concept, the, the, I suppose you could call it this princess concept, or this concept that uh, their, of their superiority. Mm. And Marina does have a feeling that she is superior to other people. Yeah. And this superiority is one of the things that God is trying to correct. Yeah. But what we've noticed is that every person who believes themselves to be superior automatically dismisses feedback yeah. because they generally believe their own opinion to be more more valid, valid than the opinion of anyone else even if yeah. that other person is god or jesus like yeah. Yeah. or anybody else for that matter yeah. it doesn't yeah. really matter they you know they believe their opinion of themselves is the only real true opinion yes. that is right you know yeah. and this is why they don't have a relationship with god because god knows no your opinion is wrong and that and i'm trying and god's trying to show you your opinion is wrong in your day-to-day -day life but you're not listening mm -hmm. and and because you want to believe your opinion is right and this is not just an issue of injuries regarding you know you know worth or other issues it's it's an issue where you believe yourself to be superior to others yeah and and marina does have that unfortunate injury where yeah. she believes herself to be superior to others and she's not from god's perspective superior ever 
Yeah. And she's no not inferior way. either. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. but she certainly believes herself to be superior and that's one reason why she quickly dismisses any counsel or feedback from any person mm -hmm. and and that's why she has dismissed every bit of counsel or feedback we have personally given her yes and what has happened with marina as tends to happen with a number of people is that we give uh, feedback in private mm -hmm. in response to a private question after a talk or something then uh, we give perhaps feedback during a seminar in response to a question mm -hmm. this has happened with Marina yes. then we give response say I've given response to her on my blog which yeah. was quite direct yeah. and st still that hasn't still no response. not responded and then I then we get to a situation where there's a public forum now where yeah. there's a lot of traffic and I'm giving feedback yeah. And it's exactly the same feedback as has happened before. Correct. What happens is... We're pretty patient, really. I we've suppose her, we are. We've, yeah. given her, <laughs> we've really got to acknowledge that. Yep, yep. <laughs> we've given her exactly <laughs> the same feedback now for nearly five years. Yes. Yep. So. And it is the first, Marina, it is the first bit of feedback that you need to deal with in order to pr start to progressing. Progress. Yeah. Yep. Um, but what I find happens for a lot of people who are very entrenched in their facade like this is the main emotions that then get triggered through this public feedback are all about the just tant it's all the, tantrum. the exposure of condition. The yeah. actual feedback does not enter them. No, no the, in fact, the actual, the actual feedback has been completely ignored again. Again. And, and it's just shame, drama. It's just charm, oh, drama. Isn't it terrible? Condition. I've been yep. exposed. Yep. And it's all these other emotions, which are not actually true. No. We, we feel love for Marina. And, and, and it's not like we haven't tried to expose yep. these things within her before on many different ways and privately and, you know, yep. Yep. all sorts of ways. And she has posted this on a public forum. So we've yep. responded on a public forum. It's not yep. like, it's not, but, but she actually believes in posting on a public forum that she's right. Yes. And that's why she's so shocked. When, I when we say, no, I'm not. sorry, Marina, but you're yep. not right. Yep. She, because she actually already, she's ignored every other piece of feedback we've ever given her. Yep. And she still believes she's right. Yep. And then when we tell her she's wrong, she gets all, you know, isn't terrible, I feel ashamed and everything. But the reality is, like, she raised it on a public forum. We have to state it on a public forum. And, and in addition to that, we've already told her many other times and she's completely ignored what we've yep. said. Yep. And and sure, uh, uh, we, it's getting to the point now where we can't really say I much think, more to Marina. I think no more. Yeah, probably uh, until this. she deals with this. Until she deals with this issue, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. basically she ignores every time we address it with her. Yeah. So 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 she loves having the interactions with us, but at the end of the day, she dismisses everything we say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, a lot of people do. That. Not a lot. Of <laughs> and I suppose you were mentioning about how we don't have a judgment of Marina. I mean, person no. personally. If I As met I her tomorrow, said, I'd go up, give her a hug and say, how are you going, Marina? Still working through that issue, <laughs> are we? <laughs> Absolutely. And what I wanted to add was that I, as I said earlier, I personally have received exactly the feedback, really, almost babe, exactly. Babe, you've received a lot stronger feedback from me in one in the course of one hour than Marina ever has in an entire life from us. That's right. And, 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 and <laughs> therefore, having faced many of my own issues that are very similar, I have no sense of judgment or... No. I don't even feel like, I, in a way, I get shocked that she's shocked because I think, oh, uh, you know. Well, no, you're now used to it. You yeah, know, whereas she, I know. she obviously is, is <laughs> going to be a long time before, yeah. if she continues the way she's going, it's going to be a very long time before she's used to receiving any truth. Yeah. And I hope that's not the case, Marina. What I hope for you is that you start looking at this basic truth that is a problem for your life and that is you do believe yourself to be superior to other people around you and you do believe they should give you everything you want and you do believe you can demand it and you do believe you should be able to treat people what you believe is loving but actually is quite unloving and get away with it you mm. do and you do believe that you should become happy doing so yeah. and you won't yeah and and these are things you've got to give up these are all a part of your facade and they're all a part of your very large addictions to have desire to have your addictions met yeah and yeah. this is what so again the recommendation to marina would be watch the videos that we did about the assistance group in australia where we talked about addictions and facade. and it talked about facade and and the sin of the facade yeah and and ask yourself marina do you really want to love because at this stage that's not what we're feeling from you what we feel from you is that you really want your addictions met and they aren't love 
Yeah. Th they're not yeah. love. Yeah. So, so you need to see them as not love and start to work through this facade and the addictions that you have in a sincere manner. And the only way you're going to do it in a sincere manner is to first recognise that your condition is much worse than you believe it to be. Yeah, and perhaps that leads to the second point, yeah. which is another area where I see a lot of people going awry, yeah. <laughs> and that is the desire to minimise and justify unloving behaviour. Yeah. And Marina in her statement saying, oh, am I really that bad? You know, there's there's a feeling in her of saying, look, come on, I don't really, it's not that bad. I want to minimise this. I, I want to just... I yeah, I said to Mary, Marina, that if... If I was the guy who you say you love, I'd be running, like I'd be living on the other side of the world to you, to be honest, because of what you're projecting at him and yeah. the demands you're putting upon him and how unloving behaviour you have with him. Like, soulmate or not, I'd be on the other side of the world. So and it is that bad. So it is that bad. And, and, the, and your desire to minimise it and justify it only pro prolongs your unhappiness and and increases the amount of unloving projections that other people mm. receive from you. And the unfortunate no thing too here is that Marina has no idea who her soulmate is, so she could actually be getting this like person who, who in the future has will have very little to do with her life and actually browbeating him into submission, yeah. which is what she likes to do. Yeah. And and it's very, very sad actually mm -hmm. that she's willing to do this. Yeah. And I, I, like I, I feel for the guy again because i just feel like he's getting abused and manipulated and mm -hmm. controlled and and I, I, like he must have such poor self-esteem to put up with it well uh, I, which is which is i sad. have spoken to marina about that in and the past as well about the reasons why he's, in he's putting up with, with it her. yeah yeah it's just really sad that it's putting even even putting yeah. up with it but but frankly anyone who wants to minimize and justify their unloving behavior and say oh it's unloving but in the context of all unloving things it's not that bad or it's yeah. unloving but honestly it's because someone was unloving to me so therefore it's okay anytime yeah. you want to do that or, she, or in this case she's justifying it saying she's afraid or whatever i don't feel that at all no no. She feels entitled. She feels entitled. Yeah. Yeah. To get away with and unloving this is, behavior. This is more of the facade based things that people often say to us, look, I'm afraid and it's all yeah. because I was hurt when really the main issues that they don't want to deal with are yeah. they feel entitled. Yeah. yeah. And may we also say that the hells of the spirit world are littered with people who felt entitled to mm -hmm. commit unloving behaviour. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's... In fact, that's the purpose of the hells. Yes, when so, people feel righteous. So, Marina, in you're in danger. You're in danger, girl. You're just in danger. And we, we would like to help you out of the danger, but you're not listening to us. And you never have listened to us because you, in your superiority, believe that whatever we say to you can't be true. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, there's little we can do to assist, aside from see you become more and more unhappy. Yeah. which is not what we want, obviously. No. You know, we'd like to see you become more and more happy, but you're not going to become more and more happy by feeding your facade and feeding your addictions yeah. and having no de demonstrable uh, willingness to love. Yeah. We're creating a whole, we should probably say, we're creating a whole heap of new assistance groups. And one of the weeks will be about this subject, about yeah. the subject of people who want to stay There'll be we're dividing the individual courses of the of the, the 2014, 2014 assistance group. group into large groups so that you can understand the particular subject. And so we'll be having a whole week on addictions and a whole week on facades, yeah. you know, yeah. and hurt self and, and so self. forth. Yeah. And and so. You, you, if you want to try and attend one of those, yeah. we'll, well, hopefully we'll have one in the States depending yeah. on the demand, but we'll let you know all of that later. Yeah. But uh, we, feel, we feel for yourself, Marina, unless you get through this particular problem that you've been in now for five years, believing yourself to practice divine truth while you haven't been practicing it at all, by the way, and you certainly are not demonstrating a relationship with God here, mm -hmm. you're not. Because mm -hmm. God, if you had a relationship with God, you could never do what you're doing to this man. Yeah, you could never do it. Yeah. So, so you're not developing a relationship with God. Our suggestion is, like, stop doing what you're doing to this man. Develop your relationship with God. Work through your addictions. Work through your facade. Work through your willingness to love, and then you might know who your soulmate is <laughs> after that. But you'll, but between then, 
you'll become more and more happy rather than yes. unhappy. Yeah, exactly. You, and you'll be proud of yourself. You'll be and proud I, of yourself that you're working your way through things. I feel that's a common misconception that a lot of people have. They they look at giving up addictions or you know making more ethical choices, and they think, oh, it's only going to lead to more hardship and unhappiness. When it's the complete the opposite. opposite. The it's the addictions opposite. that cause the unhappiness, yeah. not not the yeah. other way around. If you yeah. get rid of your addictions, you become more happy. Yeah. <laughs> like. You know, and surely you can see that, you know, when it comes to drugs or alcohol, if a person's an alcoholic, his life's a mess, when he gives up the alcohol, even if he does it, like, just as a decision instead of doing it emotionally, his life gets better. Yeah. It's more functional. It, it, he, he has more loving relationships. It, it's like, and surely that applies to your emotional addictions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what so few people don't understand and yeah. don't want to understand. Yes. Okay, third issue that Marina displays that many people display, which is a lack of listening to previous feedback. Yes. And more than that, twisting Jesus and Mary's feedback to, to meet, suit. justify, continued, to justify continued unloving behaviour. Unloving behaviour. Basically yeah. to say, look, Marina references somewhere in there feedback that we've given to her about sexual terror. And, you know, really the majority of the feedback we've given to her has been about this very same issue. Correct. But she's been very selective in what she's heard yeah. and decided that, as you said, to meet her addictions and maintain her facade. And partly she's been selective because she believes that she, she knows better. Yeah. That she, that she goes, no, I don't agree with that, so I'm going to ignore that. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I agree with that, so I'm going to accept that, right? And, and this selectiveness is not a relationship, like, to have a relationship with God, you need to be not selective with regard to truth. You need to accept all truth. Yes. You can't have a relationship with God just by being selective and some things be true and some things not and so forth. Yeah. So, so you need to allow yourself to accept every bit of truth. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, because of this superiority feeling she has, she feels that her, she has a far better take on herself and her condition than anybody external to her might have. Yeah. And as a result of that, she'll only accept things that make her feel good about herself and she rejects everything else. Yes. And, um, and while she's doing that, things are not going to improve very much because firstly, there's no humility here. Secondly, there's no desire for truth here. And thirdly, there's no desire to love here. Mm. So Marina, you've got to get truthful with yourself about these three problems. There's no humility here. There's no desire for truth here, and you have no desire to love. You just want your definition of humility, your definition of truth, and your definition. Of, that's all you want. And to be honest with you, they're not truth, not humility, and not love. What you think are not true. None of it's true. And until you give up your current concepts that you're superior in the way you analyse these things, uh, I don't see much hope for your situation improving. Yes. Which is sad because... It is She's sad. got so much opportunity for it to improve. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, that's right. She, and this is probably the fourth issue that yeah. I see. And again, I'm raising all of these. We're speaking directly to Marina, but I see the, the reason I am raising these five issues that I'm raising... It's because is, many people have these problems. Yes, yes, many. So the fourth thing is the negative projection and complaint about the way God's laws operate and the benefits of feedback, the feeling that feedback is not beneficial, that it's somehow uh, trauma. Yeah. And many people... You know what I've found? Most people who ask us for feedback only want positive feedback. Yeah. That's why they're asking. Yeah. <laughs> they're not asking for truth. They're just asking for positive feedback. They yeah. want confirmation Agreement with what of they. Their, what they perceive to be their current condition. And when we, surprisingly, don't give it, then all hell breaks loose. Yes. Like they're angry and resentful and they hate us for the rest of their life and all sorts of things happen. <laughs> right. Or at the very least, they feel very unloved. Yes, yeah. and very, you know, feel that we've been unkind yeah. in some way or something. No, yeah. we're trying to help you see the truth of what's really going on. That's what we're trying yeah. to do here. Yeah. And in Marina's case, that's what we're trying to do. And really, Marina has implied that feedback is unloving yes. or that 
a gift of loving feedback is actually a negative attraction in her life. Yeah, and when it's a positive if, attraction. When someone comes and tells me the truth, yeah. I see that as a real positive attraction. It's fantastic. Yes. It's something you haven't had to work out for yourself and exactly. someone's come along and told you. And it's something I can work with. It's something I can reflect upon. It's yeah. not something I have to pray hours about and go, I think, you know, really analysing everything. Someone has come into my life and said, hey, I see this real clearly. And to and me, that's case, months we... of, of potential experimentation especially when I'm blocked on the issue and yeah. heartache that is now alleviated because I can get on and work with that issue especially if if I open my heart to it and I go no yeah I can feel that so yeah. we're not talking about feedback here of people who just want to attack you or just want to denigrate you and pull you down and make you feel bad about yourself that's not our goal and what what our goal is we want to help you see your condition as it is right now I feel that's the, one of the biggest gifts that we can offer to people aside from helping them understand God's truth and God's laws. Yeah, because that's, that's the beginning of humility. Yeah. Without that, you don't have any humility. Yeah. So you need to see as, things as they are right now. Now, you and I have no vested interest in harming Marina in any way. Not at all. In fact, we have, fact, we we have a her. large desire to help her in her life, so yeah. we have no desire to harm her. But we do, the only way we can help her is to help her see what she continuously does with feedback she's previously been given. Yeah. And, and she's not loving truth. No. She's not. She's hating truth. Yeah. She hates it. Yeah. And, and Marina, you've got to get to the point where you start to love truth if you're going to progress. You hate it because truth confronts your addictions and your facade. And this is, gets back to dealing with addictions facade. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just a yeah. big problem for her in her life. Yeah, and the fifth issue uh, relates to that as well that I see a lot of people having is the inability to cope with even a low amount of personal feedback. Yeah, I, I think and a minuscule amount would probably <laughs> be the best way of saying it. <laughs> and I suppose um, I have had the benefit and the gift of a high level of personal feedback yeah. for many years. Now, if I initially yes i did have to work through issues of my facade i was very challenged i felt like oh it was the end of the world i reverted to self-punishment you know i did a lot of things to avoid and resist yeah. but i kept getting the feedback and i and i knew no i have but also you love the truth i did and you always have and you've also desperately wanted to love yes. like you have a, w a desire for love that's not what I feel in Marina. No. She doesn't love the truth at all. She rejects it all the time, instantly, many mm. times. And she does not have a desire to love at all. Mm. She has a desire to have her addictions met, which is completely the opposite to love. <clears throat> so then would you say that people need to find some reason why they're going to face themselves? Yes. Like for me, mm -hmm. the love of truth and the deep desire to be loving towards others is the <coughs> thing that motivated me to go back, look at myself, face the... Oh, feeling I had of my facade being cracked open and all of those things and go I, took me back and again and again and again mm. so really what I get from what you're saying is that people need to have a reason to well in the very first deeper aspiration the first something. day of the assistance group we talked about developing a d desire for love yes. developing a willingness to love yeah and I feel unless unless you want God's love and you want to have that relationship with God and you want you really want to love there, there's there's very little else pulling you out of your addictions or there's very little other reasons for pull yourself out of your addictions in your facade aside from the pain yeah. that your life is is gradually incurring yeah. in an increasing amount yeah and this is why god created the laws the way god did mm -hmm. because god knew that you know sometimes we never get a desire until we actually have enough pain to realize that hey, our life's heading in the wrong direction mm. and and I feel that a lot of people are really struggling with that concept that if I've got a lot of pain in my life, it means my life's heading in the wrong direction and I really need to do something about it. And, and, I, and it's all about love. Mm. It's all about the fact that my life, my own belief systems are out of harmony with love in some way. That's what's causing the pain. Yeah. And, and I feel for Marina, that's what she's ignoring. She, she's not, she's expecting, she's doing all these things thinking that she's loving when quite plainly she's not because the result is that her life is becoming more unhappy. Yeah. And, and if the result is that your life's becoming more unhappy, it's because you're not addressing issues of love. Your life becomes more happy when you address issues <laughs> of love, not the other way around. Absolutely. So, you know, you've experienced that and yes. anybody who sincerely 
practicing divine truth feels that. Yeah. There's a lot of people, of course, who are not sincerely practicing divine truth and their life is progressively getting more and more difficult and more painful. And the main reason why that is occurring is because they are not loving and still wanting their facade and still wanting their addictions met. Mm -hmm. That's why it's happening to mm -hmm. them. And, and the feedback God is giving them through the law of attraction, this beautiful, wonderful, loving law, yeah. is that the messenger of truth is saying to you, no, you're out of harmony with love even more today than you were last week. Yeah. Yeah. And even more than you were one year ago. And even more than you were five years ago. That's why your pain is increasing. Right? And this is what we've got to see. We're becoming, and, and as soon as we see that, we face that, and we're the, we're, we have the beginning of change. Yeah. Uh, but, but many people are in Marina's condition where it doesn't matter what you say to them and how much, how, even how blunt you are sometimes to them, they, because they feel that their analysis is superior to yours, they keep ignoring that and then they complain five years later and say, oh, but oh, practicing divine truth has just made my life more unhappy. Mm. And I say in return to you, you have not been practicing divine truth. You have not had a willingness to love. Yeah. You have not heard the feedback that's been given to you. And that's why your life has become more unhappy. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah. Anybody who it's is true. sincerely... Yeah going through these issues and working their way through these issues and get rid of their addictions and working through their facade to become their real self, they always become happier people, always, without exception. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And I came from a place where I, th I really thought in the beginning, like, I can't see how I'm going to have a happier Happy. life yeah. because I'm, oh, I don't want to be in And giving up addictions is challenging. It's challenging. Right. Because you think they're the only things you have. Exactly. <laughs> that are making your life nice. That are nice. And <laughs> yeah. I think I've shared that publicly before. But, but where it, the feeling that I had of like realizing if I give up all my addictions, every bit of pleasure I get on a day-to-day -day basis will be gone. Yeah, and, but, but see, that in itself is a false belief. That's right. Because it's totally untrue. But I had to face it as, exactly. Because <laughs> it's your addictions that are causing your pain, not the other way around. Exactly. But when faced with breaking down your addictions, you have that false belief. Correct. You think, that's it. And this is what Marina feels about this guy. She can't let him go. She can't let him go. She's got to keep hammering him. She's got to keep hammering. Her life's getting worse. She's keeping hammering. Her life's getting worse. She's being more and more unloving to him. Her life's getting worse. Her life is telling her, no, you're going down the wrong track track darling yeah like yeah. that's what's happening here you're going down the wrong track yeah. but but what does she feel no I'm going down the right track I'm gonna keep hammering yeah. I want my addiction met more yeah. and more and more and the more he withdraws the less it's getting met the more she wants it and the more she eventually there's gonna be enough pain yeah where she goes maybe I'm going the wrong direction but what we find is a lot of people by before that stage get to the point oh stuff this divine truth <laughs> i'm out of here because you know i'm having more pain they don't recognize what the cause of their pain is yeah and that's the problem here yeah. marina does not recognize the cause of her pain and she doesn't want to because she keeps resisting the loving feedback that is given to her which is telling her what the cause of her pain is specifically specifically like right down to the you know the dynamics yeah, of the of relationship her of her family of everything and she ignores it it's completely. laid out there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that's unfortunate if it she is. went back through her emails she'd see a lot of feedback you've given her over the over the years and basically it's been the same thing over and over just like it has from me yeah and uh, and it's a huge problem she has thinking that everything is based around fear and what other people are doing to her when the actual problem is that everything is based around her feelings of superiority and her demands of other people and how unloving that is. Yeah, and I see, as I mentioned in the in the message to her, I see a lot of people deluding themselves in this way yes. because they do not want to face the demands and expectations that they have on the world around them. No. But until they do, they will become increasingly unhappy. unhappy. And many people finish up blaming divine truth for their unhappiness. No, divine truth isn't the cause of your unhappiness, people. No. It's your addictions that are the cause of your unhappiness. Go out in the world and look. See all the people who are in physical addiction. Can you see their physical addiction is a direct relationship to their unhappy life? 
there is a direct correlationship. You, you drink more, you drink more, you become drunk more, you, her life gets worse, not better. You feed your addictions over and over again, that's what happens. You do the same with drugs, that's what happens. You do the same with food, that's exactly what happens. You get fatter, 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 fatter. You can't even walk out of a house after a while. Yeah. Your life becomes worse. Yeah. It's the same when you try to meet your emotional addictions. That's what makes your life worse. Truth doesn't make your life worse, it makes your life better much better. giving up addictions <laughs> makes your life better yeah not 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 all of a sudden oh no you know isn't it terrible i'm not having any addiction met my life's now a terrible disaster no it's great for the first yeah. time you're starting to work through the issues you absolutely know? yeah even giving up the addiction and just being aware of the emotion that that was driving that addiction and not having even worked through that emotion there's more you already feel you're more ethical you already feel that you're and there's a growing internal sense of pride i suppose you could call it esteem, esteem or something inside in yourself. of yourself yep. aware that you've now done some real work yep. and that your know, life is significantly changing in a positive direction and it's a direct result of your choice to be more humble and work your way through what's caused your sadness yeah and and I, and as that the esteem grows uh, the momentum grows as yes. well like so you start feeling well wow if i can do that in one area of my life i can do that in other areas of my life yeah. and and yeah. but if you keep it feeding your addictions your esteem gets destroyed yeah because you you know that you're just a slave to to your what we called in the pageant messages your urges your yeah. body you know your compulsions, your compulsions like. and your yeah. your animalistic desires yeah. is what we refer to them as yeah. and and this is what marina's doing she's she's a she's a slave to her animalistic desires yeah and she doesn't recognize it yeah and what i find is people get in they're in that they're in that in, in that and bring that to a halt sometimes that does feel maybe a bit scary maybe a bit uncomfortable maybe even a bit painful but the minute that you do and start turning that around yep. it gets as you mentioned it gets easier it's it's more you feel more inspired because you're feeling better and better and better yes. but what i find is people so many people just do not want to take that first step of stopping it mm -hmm. and just facing it's almost like the fear yeah. of stopping it is worse than the actual stopping it sometimes. Of course, and, and this is things we want to talk about in the, in the assistance, in the assistance groups. groups about, um, you know, about how to deal with addiction and why, you know, it's necessary and also about, you know, the belief systems that are there mm. inside of people that cause them to avoid processing through these things. So we have compassion for everyone who feels the same as Marina does. Certainly. And we know... Marina, honestly, this, this uh, um, feeling of superiority is one of the worst um, emotional injuries that any person on this planet has to face. Yep. It is very, very difficult emotional injury to work through. One of the worst things your parents can do to you is to indicate to you through their emotional projections that you are better than other people mm -hmm. around you. It, it, it creates a distortion of the person's internal senses so much so that it's almost impossible to help the person sometimes and this is a problem that you're going to need to address sometime in your future as do many other people who have been had the same kind of emotions from one or both parents yeah yeah and unfortunately we see today many younger persons having children who are instilling this kind of emotion in their children at such a young age mm -hmm. that by the time the children are one two or three years of age they already have a sense of superiority over every single person who comes into their you know into their environment yeah. and and it's such a damaging emotion as a parent you would never allow your child to have that emotion and you would do everything you possibly could aside from harming them of course yeah. to to overcome this emotion if you noticed it in them um because it because in the long run it, it, it's very hard to eradicate in the soul through by, by choice yeah. you know by by someone's choice what happens to most people with that emotion after they pass in the spirit world they end up in the hells because of all the things they've chosen to do in harmony with their desires and it takes oftentimes many thousands of years for them to come to a realization that actually most of their behavior 
was completely driven by their narcissistic desires and their personal tendency to be self-absorbed and selfish. Yeah. And, um, and, and once they realise that, then they grow. Yep. But, but you don't want to be one of those people who sit in that state for thousands of years. Mm. You want to deal with this now, you know, so you can, even if you do pass, you arrive in a more pleasant condition. But even when you're on earth, once you deal with this, you'll find your life significantly improves. And you'll also find that um, you'll attract more people around you who are sincere, who really don't want to live in their facade either. They, they love you. They interact with you honestly. It's just uh, yeah, a much better much world nicer. to live in. Yeah, yeah, much nicer. Yeah. So we just encourage all of those people who have that particular emotional injury from their childhood. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that all of this comes from childhood in some way. If they have that emotional injury from their childhood, just to encourage them to to address the injury rather than keep doing what Marina keeps doing, and that is ignore what is ever said to her in the self-belief that she knows better. Yes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay. Good night. Well, thanks, Marina. Yeah. Hopefully you cope with that one. <laughs> I know it's difficult to face what we've just said, but uh, we love you very much, and we hope that you can work your way through it. It's a very hard injury, as we've said, and we hope that any person who has that injury is able to work through it. Yeah. Yeah.